The final feature we're looking at in the toolbox are the generators. The majority of these are color bars which you insert at the start of a video project if you intend for it to be broadcast or if you're sending it off to be calibrated for broadcast. So the quickest way to get this in would be to command A inside of your timeline, move your clips temporarily aside, drop in the SIMT and close the gap. And now I have 10 seconds of the color bars at the start of my project, which means that when I send this off to the broadcasters, they'll be able to tweak the colors in the video to match their own broadcast standards. And that way I know that my colors will be faithfully reproduced on television. Uh, you'd normally also include a one kilohertz test tone at this stage to ensure that the audio levels are also calibrated. I can switch these around a little bit to show you different alternatives that there are. So some of these are grayscale based and a YCB CR ramp in case you're using a YUV color space. What I'd like to focus on would be the solid color mat. So I'm just going to drag and drop this in. Now it doesn't look like much at all. At the moment in its black state it's referred to as a slug. And a slug is just a piece of black footage. It looks exactly the same as if you were to have a gap in your timeline. So if I just push this footage aside and I grab my playhead and I rest it over an empty area, it looks identical. But the difference is that this section does not have solid properties. What you're actually seeing is transparency. And in certain workflows and in certain software, this means that the transparency could be included in the final output of your project. So I know there's definitely a lot of compositing programs where if you were to export your animation or your narrative with the gaps included and you use the format like ProRes 4444 or DPX, you might end up with a very glitchy looking background whenever you came across these gaps. And if you tried to use this footage in conjunction with other clips, then you would actually see through these black areas to the clips beneath. So using a slug is a good idea because it plugs these gaps and it removes all doubt. It becomes a verified solid black color. Now when a slug is not black, it's referred to as a matte or a solid color. So I can click on the inspector and right at the top is pretty much the only control I have for this generator. Uh, I can double click and choose one of the basic colors. I can choose a custom color of my own and then add it to my custom colors down here. I could type in my hue, saturation, and luminance values on the side and my RGB values if I know them. Uh, this also supports the HTML hex values, so you can just copy and paste them if you find a good color scheme online. Lastly, you have the option of picking a color off the screen. So I can select this, and then when I hover over things with my crosshairs, I can pick up other colors. And of course, I can use this like any other media on the timeline. I can grab my title track and put it on top, and then I could have all my titles occurring on this yellow background. Or I can pick up my rolling credits and drop them onto a higher track number and change the color to whatever I want it to be. Since we're talking about things that are not video or audio, I also want to talk about using stills inside of DaVinci Resolve. So you can import still images like you can any other piece of media. When I click and drag something into the timeline, uh, by default it will be 5 seconds long. Just like any other generator, I can go into my project settings and amend this number myself. In this table you can see which file formats are supported by DaVinci Resolve. And on the right hand side is a confirmation of which file types support transparency or the alpha channel. You are able to import stills referenced in EDLs, and as you can see, uh, you're better off using TIFF, PNG, or EXR for alpha channel support. Thank you for watching, and until next time.